Okay, so wrapping up this whole uh, module two, chapter four, we actually get to talk about applicable applications. <laughs> I don't think that you can use both those words uh, next to each other, but that's okay, we are. So we actually get to see why we're learning this stuff and how it's applied, okay? And so we're gonna talk about electron energy levels. And I love rainbows. I absolutely adore rainbows. But uh, a rainbow forms when light passes through water droplets, and it basically splits out the visible energy, and it's pretty cool. So the learning goal for this one is, given the name of a symbol, one of the first 20 elements of the periodic table, write out the electron arrangements. And so, like I said, we're not going to go beyond, like, the first 20, because then it gets a little bit more complicated, and we just don't need to um, go there for this class. So electromagnetic radiation. We experience electromagnetic radiation in different forms, such as light, the color of the rainbows, or even when we have an x-ray. Um, electromagnetic radiation consists of energy particles that move as, as waves of energy. And this is the distance between the peaks of the waves, and that's what's called the wavelength. And so high energy radiation is kind of like a buzzing bee, right? They have shorter wavelengths. They're just doo -doo -doo -doo. Where the low energy, they have longer, more kind of fluid wavelengths. And so we can see this when we look at the atomic spectrum. And so with the atomic spectrum, when light from a heated element passes through a prism, it's going to separate out the light into distinct lines of color, and those would be separated by dark areas. And this is what's called the atomic spectrum. And each element has its own unique atomic spectrum. And so this is fun for scientific diagnostic reasons, study, whatever, because everything is unique. And so we can study it and figure out um, what it is. But just remember that when light passes, passes through a very small slit and it goes and it gets um, passed through a prism, then it's going to separate out. Like I said, it's going to be exposed on a film. And then this is a barium light spectrum that you can see from this barium sample that's being passed through the prism. Okay. But this is part of understanding what the atomic spectrum is. So this is based on kind of electron energy levels. And the lines in the atomic spectrums are associated with the change in energies of the electron. In an atom, each electron is assigned a specific energy level. And these energy levels are assigned in principal quantum numbers. So n is like the sample number. So for example, n equals 1, n equals 2, all the way up. So an increase in the energy as the value of n increases, and they're farther away from the nucleus. So that's how we can um, tell how, how much energy we have. And the energy of an electron is quantized, and it can only have specific energy values one quantity, right? So specific values. So looking at the whole electronic, um, electromagnetic spectrum, you can see that there's a lot of different things, some that we're very familiar with, and then of course off the spectrum that we really don't talk about are going to be um, other things, right? But the electromagnetic spectrum shows the arrangement of wavelengths of the electromagnetic radiation with a visible range light of only being this very small area from 700 to 400 nanometers, okay? So this is the visible colors that we can see, while well, all these other things are still energy levels that we're exposed to quite a bit, but, you know, we just may not see them because it's not a color. You know, I happen to be, uh, you know, sitting in a room that has a beautiful, my mom made that actually, uh, quilt uh, behind me, and you can see that they're nice uh, greens and browns, blues, and whatever in, in that uh, picture. So those are all parts of the visible light spectrum, okay? But you can see that over to the left, we have uh, electricity, so power lines, radio waves, television waves, cell phone waves, microwaves, satellite waves, uh, irradiant heat, right? And then on the other side of the spectrum, we have x-rays and ultraviolet radiation, etc. cetera. So, um, Electrons with the same energy are grouped at the same energy level. So you can see, you can kind of think of it as a bookshelf, and the smaller ones with the lower energy levels are going to be on the lower shelves, and then as we increase, we're going to have higher energy level. And I kind of think of electrons almost as like gnats, where they're just buzzing around in these orbitals, okay? And so that's just kind of a fun way to kind of think of them and classify them. So when we have changes in the 
uh, electron energy levels. This is what's going to happen, right? The electrons are going to move to a higher energy level or a higher bookshelf when they absorb energy. But when the electrons fall back to the lower energy level or that lower bookshelf, then that light is going to be emitted or shown, right? And then the energy emitted is either going to be absorbed and is and when it is absorbed, it's equal to the differences between the two energy levels. And so you can see here is the energy absorbed. And then the difference there is going to be the low energy light that's emitted versus you see that this one moves more. And so it's going to be higher energy light that's going to be um, um, emitted or given off. Okay. So um, the electron arrangements in period one, you have your high energy in your first level. And that's going to be like helium only has one electron where or hydrogen, I'm sorry, has one and helium has two. And so this is in that first orbital. And now we're going to learn how to write these electron arrangements. And so you can see that um, in the first level, that's kind of like the first ring around Saturn, if you want to. Around the nucleus, we have these electron rings. And in that first level, we can only have space for two electrons. In the second level, we can have space for eight electrons. And so since, um, you know, going back here, hydrogen only has one electron. We're only going to have one in that first orbital. But helium has two electrons. So we're actually going to fill that first orbital with two electrons. But moving up to the second orbital, you can see that we can have up to eight electrons. And so your first orbital is going to be full first before you can go to the second. Like I said, these are, they're static. They're constantly moving, right? It's not stagnant. They're just, they're constantly going here, there, and everywhere, right? And then we can go to our third level. And again, the third level has a maximum of eight in that orbital. But again, before you can get into the third level, you have to fill the first and the second level before, again, you can go into the third. And so it's, it's just a way of organizing how, where these electrons go. And so, um, again, the uh, arrangement, you have to fill the first, then the second, then the third, and then the fourth, if we have extra, because I think they told you to go up to the 20th one. In the fourth orbital, we would just have to know that uh, we have one and then two electrons. Okay, so let's see if uh, we can kind of think about What's going on? So um, again, here's the levels. Uh, number of electrons in the first is eight. Number of electrons in the second orbital is, is I'm sorry, first is two, second is eight, third uh, is 18, fourth is 32, fifth is 32, sixth is 18, and seventh is eight. And so how we know what orbital we're in is we separate them by commas. And so it's always going to go in numerical order. So the first orbital, again, only has a max of two. So that'd be why it would be two comma six for oxygen because we'd only have six falling, filling the second orbital where you can see that for this one we have the second orbital full and we're going to go on to the third and then for calcium we have first second um filled and then we go on so let's write the electron arrangements for the following elements so pause me and then come back all right what did we get so for uh calcium our atomic number is six so we'd have two comma four um for this one we have atomic number 14 so we'd have two comma eight comma four right oxygen is eight so we'd have two comma six and nitrogen would be seven so we have to have two in the first and then the remaining five would be in the second all right and that wraps up this module too thanks guys see ya